परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन देव परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन देवराधा कृष्ण पाद वेरी नेचर ऑफ दायर स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड divine world is very vast simply infinite simply infinite so this evening i just spontaneously feel like speaking on wellness let's talk about wellness not just i'm not going to talk about some common type of wellness or well being but a special type overall all encompassing type of wellness and well being it's not a type it's a lingual limitation we have to say some way this way or type or manner of system or method that's our lingual limitations but this evening i'm going to talk about such such wellness and well being which connects to universal being which connects our individual being to the infinite universal being supreme divine be in other words lord krishna all pervading omnipresent omniscient divine be a divine truth all pervading absolute divine truth so when we can we can be discovering our well being greater well being wellness in relation to the supreme divine absolute being divine super power then only the conception and the practices of the wellness in our life becomes more complete there always as long as we are simply as long as we are just running after our material well being wellness only bodily wellness or well being <coughs> biological wellness well being <coughs> it remains as very partial concept partial concepts the experience of the wellness the well being see although each and each and every one of us has individual individual identity or individual identity and individual existence we have to understand 
we are, although we are individual, each and every one of us are individual being, but we are all related. It's okay when I when I declare it. Okay. So although we are each and every one of us is individual well-being, but we are I am, you are individual being in relation to the whole infinite being. So when we have to when we have to understand the holistic definition of our well-being, not a partial definition of well-being, rather the holistic definition of well-being, and we cannot but cannot but have to discover ourselves, realize ourselves in connection with the whole absolute superpower. Absolute power, absolute truth, absolute existence, life existence. Back to the point, myself, you are an individual as a part, being a part of the absolute whole reality. Okay? That's, that's how we are. I am, you are. <laughs> So when we forget, when we forget about that, we cannot see the whole truth. We only see a part. We only see just a small part of the whole truth, absolute truth, and try to define everything in a partial way, in a very small, limited manner. And we also receive limited result. We also have limited gain according, but when we have, when we can surpass that limit, surpass that limit, surpass the limited nature, partial nature, rise above, go beyond, transcend that, and can view, open our eyes and look at the absolute whole holistic, absolute, divine reality. And we discover ourselves, look at ourselves in relation to the whole beautiful, divine, absolute. Then only being situated in that consciousness, whatever we do, becomes qualified in a very mysterious, mystical way, mysteriously, mystically qualified and unlimited with it unlimited character, divine character, whether or not we realize about that, it happens. It happens that way. Because, you know, the jurisdiction of our experience, and the jurisdiction or range of our perception, our realization, experience, all are limited. There are so many things, so many important things in our life we don't directly perceive. We cannot directly perceive or experience or realize, but still they are true. They are very much truth, very true. You know, the amount of the things known by us, the amount of the things unknown by us, much greater than the amount of the things known by us. This is self-evident reality, we understand. So many things we cannot understand through our direct perception, you know, sense experience, but we can still understand them, connect to them through higher intelligence, higher dimension of feelings. Feelings, intelligence, knowledge. So many things. Um, so much work, so much activity happening within myself, within yourself. How much of it you know? It is yourself, your own body, your own mind. I repeat, it's your, it's your own body, your own mind, your own self, which you identify 
which you always identify with. So how much of your own self, your own body and mind you know? Tell me. Very little. But when we can connect to our own inner world, the world of our biological existence, mental existence, spiritual existence, in connection with the soul and super soul, higher spirit, higher spiritual existence, soul's existence, Paramatma existence, then only we start knowing ourselves better than limited way of knowledge about ourselves. Then only we can discover, we can know myself, I can know myself, you can know yourself much better and higher and deeper than what you usually, conventionally, how to say, commonly know about you, about myself. This is absolute truth. What I'm talking about, collect it, collecting it from the realizations of the great realized souls. I'm not talking about anything from some imagination or some imaginary belief system, but actual reality. See, from the collecting it, taking it from the infinite ocean of self-evident universal reality and placing it, presenting it before you all. Go back to that. See, our wellness, well-being, our complete, at least relatively complete wellness and well-being so has been so beautifully described, significantly described through the truths of Shatyam, Shivam, Sundaram. See, three dimensions of our consciousness interconnected. They're existing in our in the world of our life's realizations, very interrelated, inseparably integral way. Functions of shatyam, of <clears throat> truthfulness, shatyam, realistic activities, shivam, not just activities, it's full of auspiciousness and beauty. Benedictions and Sundaram, full of ambrosial beauty, not just ordinary beauty, ambrosial, nectarian beauty, experience of nectarian beauty, ecstatic beauty of life. So, our active existence, which is Satyam, being felt through Shivam, experience of all auspiciousness, divine benedictions, ultimately experience as most beautiful, divinely, ambrosially beautiful. That is our identity. And this is this is the self-evident truth. See, back to the, at the point of our overall <clears throat> complete wellness and well-being. See, when, whenever we talk about our own self, own identity, own existence, that means <clears throat> it is a combination of body, mind and spirit, simple life. Combination, in other words, combination of bodily level of consciousness, okay, a bodily level of experience, mental level of experience, and spiritual level of experience. Three kinds and levels, I repeat, three kinds or three levels or dimensions of our being and experience actually combine together and making, making up as our complete self. So whenever, naturally, whenever we are going to talk about the 
complete health care, not a partial health care. So going to talk about, analyze, and understand about complete health care principle, then we must understand that we must be taking care of our health, okay, taking care of health through, throughout these three levels of existence, three dimensions, bodily dimension, mental dimension, and beyond that, more than that, spiritual dimensions. So when we are able, when we are engaging in taking care of not only bodily health, physical health, but also side by side mental health and spiritual health, no less important, rather as more important than bodily health. Then only we are taking care, we are actually taking care of health in a complete sense. Otherwise, as long as so particular about taking care of our bodily health by doing some exercise and this and that and neglecting, not just know how to take care of my mental health, just neglecting taking care of mental health, what to speak more of taking care of spiritual health, then what happens? We are not, we are not being able to take care of our health properly, appropriately entirely, completely. Therefore, what happens, we are taking care, more or less, we are engaged in taking care of our bodily health very nicely, but we are not taking care of mental health and spiritual health. We do not know. We do not know how to take care of our mental health, spiritual health. Therefore, our body also cannot remain very healthy. Because if the mind remains weak, and sick. If our mental plane, mental level of existence, mental level of health remains very feeble, weak, sickly type, more than that, if our spiritual level of health is not quite healthy, not developed, then what happens? Our bodily level of existence, bodily level of health cannot also stay very healthy. We all are interconnected. If the mind becomes unhappy, body becomes unhappy, unhealthy. If body becomes unhappy, if body becomes unhappy or I'm talking in a poetic language, body our body can be unhappy, but to understand. Means when a body is sick, body is unhappy in that sense. So when body is unhappy, body is sick, our mind also gets sick. Our mind also unhappy. Our higher spirit, spiritual level also becomes affected by that. We cannot remain with high spirit. We cannot be high spirited. Our spirit gets low. We get low spirited. You see, all are so interconnected, interrelated. Like, for example, if anything happens, goes very wrong on my fingertip, you know, if this, if this is very much affected, seriously affected, only because of this, whole body can be affected. Ulti apparently it's just a part, but it's so connected with the whole organic, with organic whole, the whole body, that because of this we can get fever, septic, great infection, septic, we can get fever, or it can be very painful, a whole body gets affected, mind gets affected. That's only something is happening wrong on the finger, finger tip. Because the painful experience of the finger tip is taken to my brain through neurotic system. It's affecting the whole bodily system, so organic whole. Similarly, when mind gets affected in a negative way, when mind is affected in a negative way or the mind is sick, body, a body no matter how much we take care of our body through medicines, through exercise, cannot stay healthy because mind is unhealthy. Unhealthy, sickly mind directly affects our body and makes it sick. Similar way, when body is affected, when body is sickly, that also affects our mind. 
it affects our mind and makes the mind sickly weak. See? Similarly, when body and mind is not very healthy, it also affects our spiritual level. Okay? Spirit means energy, our power, our function of determinations, decision making. Okay? Even there, there is higher, higher dimension, higher spiritual dimension that. that. So let me primarily explain about that dimension. Let me touch, okay, talk about that primary dimension of, of, our, of our spiritual level, not even higher dimension of it, primary dimension of our spirit. That, that level actually represents our subtle emotional function, strength of determination, higher energy, okay, and <clears throat> Realizing things through determination in our life, translating things into reality by some higher, superior ability of determination, that is spiritual level, more than just mental level. The normal, common, a normal mental level is like that. It's just, it's just being your identity. All right, like a instrumental. Mind is also full of power and energy, no doubt, but it works like vehicle, more media. Okay, more like medium, hmm? mm, conduit, or sometimes it becomes itself becomes living media. But spirit is behind even spirit is the force. Real life force or life energy comes from the spiritual level, soul or super soul's level, which actually keeps the mind and body activated. See, you have to understand that. In a dead body, as soon as soul is withdrawn, soul is withdrawn from a body, it becomes dead body. Everything is there. In a dead body, all the organs are there intact. Start working. Main person is gone. What is that? As long as the spirit is there, everything is working, active, whatever way it's being active. So therefore, therefore you understand the spiritual being, the spiritual force, spiritual power behind mind and body is the actual identity, our original identity, original entity. That is, that is something, that is the reality which is maintaining and sustaining our bodily level and mental level of existence. So, we, are, we also have to learn how to take care of the spiritual health in connection with our mental health and bodily health. I repeat, taking care, taking care of our physical health in connection with mental and spiritual health taking care of mental health in relation with bodily health and spiritual health, taking care of spiritual health in relation with mental health and bodily health. Trying to give you a map. So, it's all interconnected. And at some point, you know, we can learn that through higher yogic process and yogic system. Higher yogis great devotee yogis. I'm not talking about just only impersonalist yogis. The yogis of <coughs> yogis of more complete kind, complete quality, who understands the absolute reality through impersonal energy form and also personal relationship, personal love relationship. I'm talking about that kind of yogi who can relate to Param Brahma through beautiful ecstatic energy form, also relate to the same Param Brahma in the form of great, greatly mystically beautiful divine personality, personal form of unlimited character, in personal way and personal way, both ways can relate. Okay. In personal energy form through more meditations and feelings, 
And while relating to the same supreme absolute reality, in the form of infinite personality, unli personality of in unlimited character, personality of unlimited nature and character. I'm talking about that kind of personality because the personality of infinite also that of infinite character. It cannot be that of only limited character, then it will be self-contradictory. Sometimes we have difficulty to understand the all-pervading infinite superpower in personal form because we always try to impose our limited concept of human personality. Personality on the infinite superpower and try to think oh, how infinite superpower can, can be a person because our concept of personality is so limited and we just artificially impose it on all pervading infinite divine superpower and try to feel how can it be a person, how it can be a person. But the transcendental, through transcendental experience and realize you can understand being an infinitesimal part of that all-pervading infinite superpower, if I can be personality, if I can have a personal nature, so my cause, my source also represents that. If it is absent in the cause, it cannot come in the effect. So being an infinitesimal part of the all-pervading infinite superpower Param Brahma, if I can have the qualification, ability of being a person, my source doesn't have. My source cannot have, cannot have that ability to be a person. What is that? My source, my origin, can also be manifesting in a personal way, but it, the concept the conception of his or her personality, the absolute he or absolute she, her personality is that of infinite nature, unlimited nature. That is the difference. Never, never like a very limited, tiny human kind of personality. I'm talking about that kind of vast, unlimited personality of the supreme absolute superpower, all pervading superpower. So, so many things to explain in relation to the actual point. <coughs> I'm talking about that quality, that kind of yogi, more holistic kind, who can, devotee yogi, devoted yogi, who can relate to the supreme infinite, unlimited, absolute, divine truth in, in personal energy form, beautiful, okay, infi infinite consciousness form, energy form, at the same time, beautifully, oh, beautifully realized, experienced, mm, personal form, divine personal form, when those great devoted yogis can come to see personality in the supreme, all pervading, infinite energy, superpower, then it becomes God. Then we can call as Krishna, Rama, Shiva, Brahma, the different names. And the great, the great game. Special gain, most special, beautiful gain in relating to the supreme, absolute, infinite Brahma, <coughs> superpower in a personal way through ecstatic relationship is that that we can enjoy, we can enjoy and taste so much of our personal love relationship with him or her which is not, which cannot always be possible only through impersonal form of relationship, impersonal way of relationship with the Param Brahma. But what we can do in a very tiny way on this even mundane plane of existence, okay, having some personal feelings of love, ecstatic, joyful love in relation to my beloved, personal way, personal, ecstatic personal relationship through ecstatic 
not with less than. But we can have here on this plane tiny wave. Just a glimpse. We can have that a full faced huge wave, vast wave, with the less than to the supreme the heart. Supreme the heart. So great yogis, devoted yogis know how to have our holistic wellness, take care of our holistic well-being in a holistic way, in connection with the whole absolute. I drank so much water, I have to go to the toilet. Just I'm coming back. Uh -huh. Coming back. So many toilets. <laughs> Again, in, in connection with the, with the ideal wellness, in connection with how to take care of our, our well-being, take care of our well-being ideally. Holistically. Now I tell you. So much to explain about it. You know, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna wonderfully explained about how to live a balanced life. How to live a life in a very balanced and <clears throat> High class way in the mode of goodness. He simply instructed us about do's and don'ts. I repeat, in several ways Lord Krishna clearly instructed us about do's and don'ts. What should be done, what should not be done. He simply instructed us, okay, reject your tamasic and rajasic lifestyle be away from your lifestyle living in the mode of ignorance or passion, material passion. But you must be, to be determined, be determined to live your life in the mode of goodness, instead of living in the mode of ignorance and material passion. Lord Krishna also wonderfully explained about the realities of Sreya and Preya. Preya and Sreya. Preya means <clears throat> something for those things or stops in our life which feel very good, which feel like intoxicating, very good or very nice, attractive in the beginning of life. But as it continues farther and farther, it brings very negative result. It brings very harmful, poisonous results. It's called prayer. Seemingly, it seems to be good in the beginning. That's how illusion is describing. That's how some illusory way is also working in our life. Therefore, it is so much required to understand things and apply, implement, implement those in our life guided by the lights of wisdom, lights of knowledge. Otherwise, like in a desert, there is a mirage. We find mirage in the desert. The matured, the intelligent, Matured person knows it's a mirage. I am not supposed to run after that. Although it looking like there is some water there, okay, 
water there, but actually it is an illusion, an illusion of the water, not real water. So I should not be running after it. But the ignorant person who doesn't have any clue about it will think, oh, there is real water and they will be running. He will be running after that and the mirage will be going away and away. So, just an example of how we are also guided by illusion, illusory perception. There is a lot of difference between reality, realistic experience and illusory experience. Both are experiences. Both are experiences in our life. One is that of more temporary mortal illusory experience. Other one is more that of hmm? more important, immortal, more valuable, <coughs> realistic experience. So we are supposed to follow the world of realistic experiences, living aside our illusion of experiences. We find both things in our life. So back to the point. Lord Krishna explains, Preo means it seems to be, appears to be so good, illusorily appearing to be so good in the beginning, like intoxication or something like that. But as it continues further in life, oh, it, it opens up, okay, it, ex it is exposed to its real character, very, something very harmful. It comes up with harmful effect, very unhealthy, poisonous effects. That is called prayer. On the other hand, Lord Krishna also explains seo. Seo means something or those realities which may or may not, I repeat, which may or may not be starting in a very good, beautiful, wonderful way. But as it continues further, as the life goes on with it further and further, develops further, it simply brings more and more good to better to best results, more and more auspiciousness, health, okay, health, nectarine experience, in body, mind and spirit. So, that is called Seo. Brings superb, high class, nectarine result in our life. That is called Seo. The Lord Krishna says, you must be able, you should, you should have the ability of differentiating between these two class. Because most, many, many people in this material world are just running after prayer. Something seems to be good, appear to be, appearing to be good in the beginning, and then in the long run, in consequence, bringing so much bad result and bad effect. And there, that's why what happens due to the lack of knowledge, lack of experience, Lacking in ability to implement appropriately and properly, we all are suffering. Most of the people in this world are suffering, suffering a bad health, or a bodily, or a physical health or mental health. They are suffering because number one, they do not have proper knowledge, no proper lights of wisdom about the full-scale health care. Number two, they do not have the proper guidance to feel, to be properly inspired. In other words, they do not have the proper association, higher association in life, all the time, all the time, all type all the time, all association, mostly all association they have is just material, grossly material, either in the mode of ignorance or in the mode of passion. Hardly they find any association in the mode of goodness. So, these people in general do not have any chance, this mundane level, gross mundane plane, 
able to be associating, to come in contact with something higher. You know, more than just tamogun and rajogun, mode of ignorance and mode of passion, material passion. What can you expect? Because association is very, very most important thing in our life. It plays a most vital role. There is a saying in English, man is owned by a company. <coughs> you know, <clears throat> a man can be known by his or her association. I am, you are what you are associating with. You are, to some extent, you are what you are eating. What you are absorbing within you. You are what you are associating with. Because our identity, we have got our, see, we have, in the first place, we have got our own fundamental, fundamental original identity. It is true. But because we cannot directly connect to our true fundamental original identity on the level of soul, we do not have that ability to have so much covered, covered by ignorance, okay, some wrong ideas and limited illusory experiences. So therefore, see, our identity changes according to what we associated, associate with. We can simply understand it very scientifically. When you are in a good association, you feel so good and great. Your physical health, mental health, and spirit all gets uplifted, isn't it? When you are spending, I am spending my life in some better association, good, positive association. It fills me in with so much positive energy instead of negative energy fills me in with so much positive energy, divine energy, in the mode of goodness, in the mode of divinity. So, it directly reflects, immediately it reflects in our bodily level, mental level, and it makes us accordingly. So, it is very, very important in our life to live a truly healthy life to have a true, complete health care, to choose good association, better association, very, very important. Because it is true, we are, we become what we associate with. Our identity can be changed every moment, it can be changed according to how it is being affected, like chemicals. When you, two chemicals you see, there you find so many chemicals. Okay, you, you can you can collect so many chemicals together. As soon as you bring them together and mix each other, they start mutations. They start interactions and mutations. They become another thing. Okay. So as it happens chemically, as we find through chemical mutations like that, as soon as they come in physical contact, means association. Connection. Association means connection. Con in other words, so as soon as two chemicals or three chemicals comes in connection with each other, associate closely associated with each other, it, it has natural mutations. Similarly, as it is found on the level of the chemistry, chemical chemistry science, I repeat, as it is found on the level of the chemistry, it's also found on the level of physics. On the science level of the physics, you know, great yogis can experience getting on the top of the roof, rooftop, while watching, gazing at the cloudless night filled with stars and planetary, planetary systems, filled with stars, and solar system, galaxies. You know, and through meditation, great yogis can directly feel connection with that cosmic power, all the time emanating, being extended from the universe, and directly connects and absorbs within and absorbs that cosmic power within, power of God, in different forms. I have got power of God in myself in one way, 
same power, similar power of God coming through, manifesting through cosmic creation another time. And when they get united together, it becomes marvelous, wonderful experience. Myself becomes prey over the universal energy. It's a realistic experience. It can happen. Astral traveling, okay, becoming unified with all pervading Brahma energy, cosmic energy, universal energy can actually happen through consciousness. We cannot have that experience in a limited biological way. It's not anything like I'm grabbing it with my hand or going there running and touching. It has to be connected through consciousness path of consciousness, because spirit, spirit has to be connected by spirit. Matter can be connected through matter, okay, as we can connect to another matter, one, we can, one matter can be connected in a, through material way, we can connect to the matter in a material way, objectively. Similarly, when we are trying to connect to the spiritual dimensions of our realizations, reality, we have to connect it in spiritual way, not in a material way, it doesn't work. Okay. Higher world of the, the, the world of the higher spirit, infinite spirit, divine spirit has to be connected purely through purely spiritual path, path of our deeper feelings, experience, inner subjective to super-subjective experience. We have got the world of objective experience, we have also got the world of subjective experience to the super-subjective experience. Nowadays, scientists can, the scientists are mystified, they are wonderstruck and mystified as they reach the quantum physics level, the level of the quantum physics. They can see, you know, anything can happen in such a mystical way, mysteriously. On that level, the movements of the, all the molecules or atoms are so, so mystical and mysterious. It cannot be defined in one fixed way. You know, only one, cannot be defined in only one absolute way. This more, they are experiencing their ways of the accent activities in this way, in a particular manner, at this moment, next moment they are seeing it, it changes. <coughs> another dynamic way. Next moment they see another dynamic way. See, what to speak more of the higher divine energy. So, and the prospect, what to speak more of our past infinite prospects aspects and prospects, range, you know, of having multiple, multiple aspects, innumerable aspects, innumerable dimensions of experience about that all-pervading supreme divine energy, all-pervading superpower. Innu there are innumerable dimensions <coughs> and while they are, those, all those dimensions are summarized into one absolute reality, it's called Parama Brahma. Absolute truth, absolute universal truth, supreme truth manifests through material dimension also through higher spiritual dimensions, multiples, multiple variegated spiritual dimensions. And what is our life? Our life is not just a material stuff. When we, we talk about our life, our being, our life existence, not just bodily existence, not just body, I'm not just body, Yogis realize so much is happening. There is another whole world 
whole world of the consciousness and activity within my body, what to speak more of within my mental world and spiritual world, within my body even. Therefore, in the process of the hot yoga, higher yogic truths, our body, all our bodily activities, inside bodily activities, our inner bodily activities are not just explained in a common medical or biological sense like, oh, here is kidney, here is stomach and liver, this heart, lungs, okay, here is throat and this brain, finish like that. But they are, they are just, they are just uh, being active or they are just working uh, on their own as it is needed, as they are required to maintain and sustain this, our whole body, our biological system. So that's how it has been created. Our heart, lungs, kidney, liver, stomach, brain, liver. they are all just working to be maintaining and sustaining our whole body. And this is wonderful, mysterious, that's all. Biological, that is biological kind of analysis. Now, yogis never see our inside function, inner function of the body, like in that simple materially biological way. Therefore, because they don't view our being, my identity, your identity, just a body. Much more than that, I am a conscious being. My being is actually more than body. Body is related with, but an aspect. Our material body is an aspect of our whole being. But this deeper aspect, inner aspect, that of mental, mental aspect and spiritual aspect, that of mental identity and spiritual identity. Our mental and spiritual identity is very close to our neurotic identity, neurotic system in our body, because that bears the consciousness. That that, is, that works as a conduit, as a vehicle of our thought wave and consciousness. Okay, so. But again, our neurotic system works, validated by which power? So, I repeat, whole neurotic system in our body also working, being validated, empowered by soul, spirit behind. As soon as that spirit is withdrawn, spirit soul is no more there in the body, whole neurotic system is there, intact in the body, it doesn't work. What is gone? Okay? If the neurotic system in our body is self-sufficient, self-dependent, then it can still work, everything is there. Nothing works. That clearly proves there's a, there's a great packing power, packing force vital force, vital power, life power, life potency, which is in other name called soul, in relation to the super soul, that is. Because that is behind, that is working behind all these organs, our bodily system, mental system, it is working. As soon as that is withdrawn, everything is inactive. Everything becomes inactive. That is, there lies our real identity more on spiritual dimension. So, back to the point, the way great Ayurvedic doctors, yogis, started viewing our inner bodily system, inner, you know, uh, inner biological system, not just in a bodily way. <clears throat> they, <clears throat> they started defining it in spiritual terms, more harm of consciousness. Today we know it's reading yoga. Muladhara chakra. See how they are defined. Muladhara chakra. Then Swadhisthana chakra. Manipura chakra. Above that, 
अनाहत चक्र और हार्ट चक्र विशुद्ध चक्र अग्र चक्र सहस्रार चक्र सो सेवन देखो विश्वालाइज देखो फील एक्सपीरियंस आवर आइडेंटिटी आवर बीइंग थ्रू हाउ इट इज फ्लोइंग थ्रू सेवन एनर्जी मैकेनिज्म सेवन लेवल्स ऑफ एनर्जी मैकेनिज्म्स एंड दे आर नॉट सीइंग ओह just some prostate gland or kidney or or pelvis or what kidneys or just abdomen or some intestine or some heart or lungs or liver as a gland or throat or brain or gray matter neurotic system they are viewing it as chakra it's like energy center Okay, seven levels of energy centers in our body. So those energy centers are not material; cannot be materially explained. It is they are having spiritual existence, spiritual activity, and they are actually maintaining and sustaining our whole biological system. Then they discovered also three types of nari, neurotic system, neurotic dimensions. Ira, Susumna, Pingala, on the right side Ira, or left Ira, in the, in the center, central position Susumna on the right, Pingala this way. So now the yogi is discovered the seven levels of the energy centers which are working. in mutual cooperation through our our bodily existence and therefore a whole body and mind mental system just working as five and they are and behind all those energy centers they are they also discovered understood there is a whole some spirit source of all that energy the whole sum one okay one how to say you know one whole spiritual being behind all these energy centers or neurotic activities consciousness and that is called the soul and that soul is connected to the super soul supreme another direct manifestation of the supreme god and our soul is our own individual identity and that individual identity as a part of the supreme the supreme being supreme absolute being the supreme lord okay it has is connected with the super soul part means it has to be connected directly or indirectly actively and passively it has to be connected effect cannot be without cause although when effect coming out of the cause looks like it's a separate thing so oh, effect is effect i mean sorry cause is cause effect is effect so we can differentiate we can we can separate between cause and effect although cause and effect are two separate identity can be separated can be understood in separate way distinct way yet they are also inseparable so they have to be understood the cause and effect must be understood in non difference and difference both together simultaneously happen because no effect can exist without its source and origin cause because cause is coming out cause is being born from the effect sorry effect is being born from the cause effect is just being born from its source from its origin from its cause and so how can the effect can deny its original relation connection with the cause similarly 
cause also cannot deny its connection with the effect. Same, so same cause is delivering the effect, giving birth to a new effect, and thereafter we find the same effect also transformed into another cause and giving birth to further effect. And that, that effect also again being transformed, converted into further cause and giving birth to newer effect. Like, like we find in the chain of creation. Today's babies, tomorrow's parents. Today's, today's baby, the he or she, tomorrow's father or mother. See, babies are coming out of the parents. So parents are the cause, babies are effect. And this same effect in the form of baby also becoming converted into cause at some point to give birth to further effect of spring. Mystical, misty, wonderfully going on like this, without beginning and without end. Flow of creation. Flow of <coughs> new to newer, newest creation, maintenance and annihilation. Flow of birth and then in the okay, in the middle between the birth and death. So starting with birth and in the middle functions of maintenance and sustenance and then annihilation, dilution. Again after dilution, annihilation after death, again rebirth. Rebirth and refunctioning, repeated functionings of maintenance and sustenance and again die, again re being reborn. Going on and on and on. And liberation means going beyond, going beyond this circular system, cyclic system. So, liberated life is full of wonder, more wonderful, more beautiful, more successful. Because it's going beyond the limit of birth and death cycle. Anyway, back to the point. So, the great yogis, devotee yogis, in other words, great spiritualist, okay, devotees of divine truth, they, they look into our being, they look into their identity, not just as body, much more than that. <clears throat> as <clears throat> Rather, I am a soul. I am a soul in connection with super soul. That is real me. And from that real me, all these are being extended. Like from the cause, effect coming. All these being extended means all these centers, energy centers, or in biological way, you know, the form of, you know, prostate gland or kidneys, you know, intestine, stomach, liver, lungs, heart, brain, neurotic system, bone system. So, but my actual, my real, or the source of my identity, my original identity that I am so, from that subtle level, subtle dimension of soul's existence, all these are more manifested, more materially gross way, grossly materialistic way. Okay. Thereafter, you know, energy centers from the level of super soul and then soul, energy centers are manifesting, getting extended, manifesting. From those energy centers, more biological organs, all the biological forms are more manifesting. So they are all manifesting from inside out, not outside in. See? And we see the same thing in mother's womb. While, while the baby is conceived in mother's womb, which I got from mother's womb, how we see the inception, how we conceive the inception, how, we, how can we conceive from the very 
basic fundamental level of the conception of a child in mother's womb. Very subtle. Seed forms. From the seed form, body is growing. Life and body, life energy and body is more manifesting more and more. Not that from gross it is coming to subtle. Gross coming, gross is manifesting from the subtle. Modern science can also recognize it. Everything is better. Everything is being expanded or extended, being born from the subtle energy, from the subtle fine energy. All the matters also coming from the spiritual energy. You know, when the energy form is manifesting more in a grosser way, crude or grosser way, it becomes matter, it becomes material. So our actual life existence, our actual our biological energy, biological power, biological entity and identity actually manifesting from the level of soul. Soul to more slightly grosser energy form like energy centers and those energy centers extending its energy activity through organ shape, to the shapes of organs, different organs. And those organs are helping to maintain and sustain this bodily system. That's how we have got the body. As soon as those energy systems are taking leap, whole body is getting inactive. Whole body just invalid, worthless. It has to be either burned, put underground. Immediately from the very point, from the very starting point, soul leaves the body, fermentation starts. Can you imagine? Sewing. Who is the real maintainer and sustainer of the body? As soon as soul leaves, right at that moment, fermentation starts. Body level process of dilution starts. That so great devotee yogis look at our being, defying the identity of the spiritual. Therefore, back to the point, I started my talks on how to take care of our health, to have health care in holistically. So yogis take care of the health not just in a bodily way, biological way, okay, through medicines or chemical medicines or even herbal medicines or operation, surgery or even physical exercise. But they discover to take care of our health more innermost way, more innermost way discovering the inner dimension of our existence, identity. And therefore, through meditation and yogic stretches, through different yogic stretches, pranayama, yogic breathing exercise, yogic stretches, and some mudra, mulabandha mudra, mulabandha mudra, mahabandha mudra, there are different types of mudra. They could, they could discover, they could find the ways of directly helping and overall unifying with their meditation power, unifying their mental power of concentration, meditation, while doing all these mudras and pranayama and yogic stretches. In combination, they could directly help all these seven energy centers within our body. And not only they could help, they could feel and they could visualize. They could feel into and visualize the energy, the ways of the energy activities. The, the, the ways, patterns, types, the systems of how the energy is actively flowing and doing their functions through all those energy centers. 
located in different uh, located in different places in our body as I have described. Starting from Muladhara Chakra and ending to up to ending with Sahasrara. It is completely connected. It's an organic whole, completely connected to Ira, Susumna, Pingala, biological cell they call spinal cord, through which our neurotic system okay, extended all over our body. Spinal cord is another energy center, all mystically wonderful. Everything is a miracle. Every morning we are waking up, it's also a miracle. Can we control our waking up? We cannot control anything. Still, we have got so much vanity and false pride. I am doer. I am doer means only I can do to that extent what I'm, I am given. I am only able to do things to that extent which is being validated, sanctioned by the superpower. If that sanction is withdrawn, I cannot do anything. It's all given. So, back to the point. So, yogis can directly help our inner, inner existence of the health, inner, inner system of the health, which is connecting not only to the body, to the mind and spirit. And they do wonderful job. They do wonderful job. Therefore, we find hot yogis and other yogis can live for so many years. And they can live with high class adventurous spirit, uplifted spirits, more than the common, normal, common, limited ones. And they know how to do away with all types of energy of frustrations. They know how to do away, okay, how to remedy all these negative energies, flow of negative energies, feeling, replacing that all with a positive energy, replacing the adversity and turmoil, replacing our disappointment and frustration with great hopes, optimism, success and fulfillment. As we find, there we see the world of, a big world of negative energy. And side by side, as we extend, as you ex extend our views, side by side we can also see a big world Past unlimited world of positive energy. So why should someone be so expert only to be associating with the world of negative energy? Why not associating with the world of positive energy? This is illusion. That illusion has to be broken. This illusion has to be destroyed. Then we will be more attracted to be associated with the world of positive energy. As soon as we get more associated with the world of the positive energy, then immediately that will occupy us, our body, mind and spirit, throwing away all the influence, effect of negative energy, evil energy from our life. And one who knows how to do that, knows how to take care of the health, more complete sense, holistic sense. Am I clear? So, we need to have higher knowledge, higher lights of higher wisdom about how to take care of our health in totality, holistically, through bodily dimension, mental dimension and spiritual dimension, unifying all of them together. Okay, into one being, which is me, which is you, my real holistic identity, individual being, 
which is actual me, actual you. So therefore, as we are, as we become so conscious and so particular about taking care of our bodily health, equally we must be conscious, careful, caring about taking care of mental health, and more than that, spiritual health. When we are able to take care of our bodily health, mental health, spiritual health, in cooperative unification, in harmonious cooperation, okay. <clears throat> in harmonious flow, then only we are able to take care of our health holistically. And when we know, when we, when we start to take care of our health holistically, lot of negative energy and sickness on the bodily level, mental level, will all go away. And this is truth. I give you an example. Even material, from material existence. When normally something, suppose, see many negative things happen in our life time to time. Negative things, adversities come in our life time to time. So when we are faced with some negative happenings, okay, occurrence in our life in a normal, common, you know, touchy, feeble, weak way, then we, we become so much affected, we feel, we become, we almost feel, almost we feel like being collapsed and succumbed, overpowered, so disappointed, frustrated. But when we can wake up, with superior ability, superior energy, positive energy, then we can take the same happenings as adventure. Same thing, we, when you accept it, look at it with adventurous spirit, then you enjoy it as adventure. But the same thing becomes so un uncomfortable, distressful, okay, so distressful and Painstaking, when we take in a normal way, oh, I cannot climb up the mountain. Oh, I cannot, I cannot take it. It's too much to climb up the mountain. Or it's too much to uh, go out in the snowy weather environment to play the ski. Okay, or too much to be surfing in the on the top of ocean wave. Too much. It's too much for me to be surfing on the big ocean wave. Fearful. Fearful. Afraid of. I cannot survive. See, that is a normal, common, weak way of relating, facing the things. For something, same things, no more a problem to that person when taking knows how to relate, how to connect, how to accept it with adventurous spirit. Same ocean waves, same mountain climbing or hiking, same what, what else, like a swimming in the ocean in that way, becomes a problem, fearsome or frightening in a normal way, common way, I cannot do it. Or diving deep in the ocean, underneath the ocean. What to speak more of enjoying is fight it. If someone is, someone is put, forcibly put in that situation, one who doesn't know, not prepared to take it in with adventurous temperament, they will, will be immediately will, will feel, will be so frightened, so frightened, so disappointed, you know, so nervous, so frightened, immediately would start taking pain, crying, by the same things, no more problem, no more frightening, rather can be enjoyable when they are related with this spirit of adventure, adventurous spirit, then they can be enjoyed. See the difference?
So similarly, when we can wake up, we can discover more and more, wake up with our superior positive energy level from within and taking from without, from outside, from the cosmic existence, universal existence, from within and without, from inside and outside, we are surrounded by the consciousness, the energy of creation also. That, crea that energy of creation is outside me, within me. And they are all interconnected. I am separate from outside, at the same time I am not separate from outer force. Something common, something in particular. Although common and particular are not exactly the same thing, they are separate from each other, common and particular, by common nature and particular nature. Yet, they are also interconnected. Because without commonness, without the connection of commonness, no particular can emerge. Nothing special can merge out. And without particular identity, you know, commonness can also cannot exist. Because all commonness, existence of commonness, common principle includes the potential of the particular ways, special, special ways within, like discovery. Discovery means what? I am not, I am not newly creating anything. Just discover it. It is already there. It has already been there. Not that I am newly creating or inventing. Even invention also not real invention. Creation. It is discovery. A higher type of discovery. When we say, oh, you know, I am inventing this. How can we invent if it is not there in the first place? <laughs> Even the invention has got its root and source, origin. Invention also becoming possible because of potential, prospective. Okay, ways of the truth is there, already there. Therefore, invention is possible. It's not really creating something really newly new. Can we really create something completely new? No. Where from new is coming? From something old, isn't it? If there is no, if there is no existence of the old being, can any new come? Because all the news are coming from the old. And old is also qualified as the old because it is losing its new character and getting old, being more mature. So they are all interconnected, interrelated. One of the characters of the Supreme God is is that of ever old nature, Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarva Karuna Karuna. That of ever old nature being the ever old origin of everything without any beginning. At the same time, that of ever new to newer, newest nature. Okay, flowing. If there is no manifestation of new to newer, there, no, there won't be dynamic flow. Flow means dynamic. Flow means there must be dynamic nature. Otherwise, everything will be stagnant. Okay? Stopped and stagnant. See, Supreme, the character of the Supreme God is the most wonderful, inconceivable character of the Supreme God. Both characters are included. That of ever old nature and ever new nature. And both are going, manifesting together through mutual cooperation. Mutual coexistence. Most wonderful to understand. And we cannot fully comprehend all. We can only comprehend a glimpse. We know it is happening. How is happening? Which way happening? How it is we how it is going to change character, the supreme energy, we cannot comprehend. Beyond our limited comprehension. We can only comprehend to some extent, certain extent. Now back to the point of our holistic wellness. Mm -hmm. Holistic taking care of our well-being. 
taking care of our well-being holistically. Therefore, when following the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, other holy scriptures, following the following the advices, guidelines of great okay, great laws, like Sri Ramachandra, Sri Krishna, Lord Shiva, Narayana, Brahma, Paramatma Leha, source of Paramatma. When we start taking care of our health, not only bodily, by living in the mode of goodness, but also mentally, living mentally in the mode of goodness, also living spiritually in the mode of divine spirit, and can combine this take care together, together, togetherness, unification between body, mind and spirit, okay, bodily level, mental level, spiritual level, then only we are able to take care of our health, of our wellness properly, most appropriately and holistically. And that has been that has been explained. Uh, very appropriate guidelines, very appropriate guidelines on how to take care of our health holistically have been given in the holy scriptures, in the holy precepts of many, many realized devotees of the Lord, great spiritualists, realized personalities. Even the Supreme Lord also extended his or her message through those realized wise, saintly persons, saints, throughout the ages. So let us do that. Let us go for that, do that. You can, I'm not going, I cannot go into details analysis, it will take another three hours if I go into details. So you can find the details, the details of the descriptions through Ayurveda, okay, in the books of the Ayurveda, in the books of the Yoga, Hatha Yoga, in the books of how to, in the scripture, holy scriptural text, in other words, in the holy text, in the holy scriptures, in the world of holy scriptures, holy texts, so how to live our life, Overall, how to live our life in the mode of goodness and more than that, in the mode of divinity, higher than just mode of goodness, also in the mode of divinity, in mode of transcendence. Mode of, mode of goodness is just good. But where, if we want to do better, then we have to go further, good, better and best. So. Let us start living our life better. I repeat, let us begin living our life in the mode of goodness and higher than that in the mode of divinity. Better, that's even better, and go farther to the best uh, divine dimensions. Then only we can take care of our health full fledged way, holistically. Let us do it. Be determined to do it. So much of our problems of life will be simply removed, destroyed. So much of the problems of our life will be replaced by solutions. So much, so much portion of our life occupied by negative energy will be replaced by the positive energy, healthy energy. It is true. This is reality. Jai, Jai Om Shubhar Paramahamsa Parigavicharya Shotra Sata Tisrimat Bhakti Nandan Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Anandi Gauri Vaishnava Vrindi Ki Jai Gaura Primanandi Jai, all glories to all our Guru God, Supreme Lord, 
Jai, all glories to the Supreme Lord, the Divine Kapu, Sita Rama Chandra Radha Krishna Chandra Shiva Shambhu, Paramatma Bhagavan Ki Jai. Yeah.